I play uh, this uh, character named Rory, and Rory's Rory Calhoun, and he's basically a guy who uh, uh, is a kind of a rule follower, and he's he's um, he he sands floors for a living, and um, he's he's got a kind of his in his backstory, he's got a, a problematic relationship with his with his son, and uh, really no relationship with an ex-wife, and when we kind of find him at the beginning of the movie, he's really He's pretty down. He's not. He doesn't kind of present as particularly depressed, but he's uh, his mind is kind of going to some pretty dark places, and he's kind of starting to think about what the point of all this is. And and um, and it's in that context that he kind of makes this rash kind of radical decision to participate in a in a crime for the first time in his life. And so that's how he he kind of enters into this world. So he kind of brings the audience into this world of uh, um, kind of petty petty criminals in Boston. And the three kind of main characters are uh, Casey's character, this guy Cobby, who's a career kind of criminal, but really he's just this guy who's looking for a friend, um, and he really wants to belong, and he's kind of up for anything. Um, and then my character Rory, who's who's doing this, who's committing a crime for the first time, and then uh, my psychiatrist, who, um, who Hong Chow plays, who kind of gets swept up in this, and basically, uh, for reasons of her own, decides to kind of participate in in our escape basically in an attempt to do therapy um, and convince me to turn myself in and so she kind of comes along in an attempt to try to resolve everything without uh, without me getting hurt or anybody getting hurt um, and uh, and so those are kind of your three characters who kind of get thrown together and end up together nothing goes the way that they uh, uh, we're kind of told it should go. Uh, kind of everything goes wrong right from the outset. Um, the you know they, they think they're walking into a restaurant where there will be a couple people working in the kitchen and they're going to zip tie them and um, and they walk in and it's just a it's you know there's 40 people and you know the event that was supposed to be over hours ago is still going because it's a it's an election event and the mayor hasn't conceded the election and so it's a so there's people everywhere in this in this building and um, and so. You know they're they, they're kind of forced to improvise, but they don't really know what they're doing, and so uh, things kind of kind of uh, spiral from there. The tone that was what kind of jumped off the page, and it's very very difficult to get tone like that right, and that was why Doug was really the only person we thought of to do it. He is so good at that, and has done it so many times, and it's really almost like kind of creating a world, like an entire world of its own and I remember going back to like the mood board he showed me for the born identity where I went oh and like you, I, you go and look at the final film and you I could think back to that mood board and go yeah that's what that was it was all kind of there and um, it, but it but you to do it's so difficult because it's such like attention to detail and um, and he's really you know what I love about him as a director is that he's allergic to tropes and it's really easy to fall into those when you're doing a movie like this that's a little higher concept and it's an action comedy and it's, you know, it's, a little, it's very easy to kind of fall into these things that have been done before, you've seen before, and that's what he really uh, is just resists at a kind of a, 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 you know, at a cellular level. So he's always pushing back, um, you know, what, what makes this more fun? Well, you know, we, we really want it to be a fun, entertaining movie. So what, what makes it more fun? Uh, what's something that's unique that we haven't seen before? And that's what I think kind of, uh, if you look at his body of work, there's always, there, it's always really surprising what happens in his movies. The tone is always very unique and very, you go like, I haven't seen anything like that before, whether it's Go or The Born Identity or Edge of Tomorrow or Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's always really interesting and unique. It still feels somehow grounded in reality, as kind of crazy as things can can get, and that's really the trick. Like, how do you do a movie about something serious, but don't make it feel serious, make it really fun? Well, Hong's amazing. I mean, I've worked with her before. I love her. She's one of my favorite actresses, and, and we, it's, a, it's a very difficult role because you have to, you have to believe that she's, uh, she's a psychiatrist, a credible, like, and that she's good at her job, and, and you also have to believe that she gets in the car, like, right before a high-speed chase. It's like, it's really, and when she, t she took the part, and I was like, this is really, this is the crux of the movie, basically, is you getting in the car. We have to, you know, we have to kind of earn that and believe that. And so 
You, it requires like somebody uh, who can, can kind of convince you of anything. So it requires kind of a great, a great actress. So we were lucky to get her. It should be a lot of fun, and and there should be some real memorable jokes and characters, and it should just be a really entertaining good time. And maybe it sneaks up on you at the end. The beginning of the movie, you've got Michael Stuhlbarg, who is um, trying. He has an idea for a crime, which is to rob the mayor on election night because he's going to be throwing this huge party. And there'll be a lot of people there paying the mayor off to keep their contracts around the city. So we establish this mayor character as being corrupt, running a long time corrupt operation, operation of corruption and uh, bribe and um, taking bribes and selling contracts and so forth. And Michael Stuhlberg is hoping to steal all of that money on election night but he can't find anybody to do this job. So he's got Jack Harlow's character, uh, who promises to be able to find a couple people to pull this off. But no one wants to take this job, uh, and he has to really kind of scrape the bottom of the barrel where he finds me and Matt. And we're willing to do the job because, in part, we don't really know any better or we don't really care. Jacob Milne is my character's name, called Kavi, and he's had a life of feeling, uh, he's a, been a foster kid, and just has, has, up until we meet him, we feel like he has been uh, nothing, experienced nothing but abandonment and uh, betrayal, and feel has felt sort of maligned and misunderstood and left behind and did time for someone else, and he's had a rough life. And he is nothing at all like Matt's character, who also has, we're meeting sort of at the rock bottom. These guys have nothing in common, except that they're both at a kind of dead end in their life. Our story is the story of these two guys sort of being stuck together. At first, that part was, it was a smaller part of a guy who really didn't ever speak. But Matt has, uh, you know, when he said, you know, I'd love to do this movie with you, it was like you're just not going to leave it that way. You know, Matt's got 30 years of experience creating great parts and being fantastic in movies. And so then, you know, it was sort of tailored to him and what he wanted to do. And um, whereas I, I play someone who's led a life of in and out of crime, and Matt plays someone who's sort of had all other kinds of bad things happen to him and made mistakes and things, but he's never been a criminal. And so um, he's... He's on this job for the, uh, it's sort of the first time he's ever committed a crime, really. Um, and uh, so they're a funny, a funny pairing. For whatever reason in, in my career, I've been, ended up playing a lot of dramas, tragedies, characters who have either had terrible things happen to them or, or you know, their lives just haven't gone very well. And, um, and I've always wanted to do something that was more lighthearted and just comedic. And, you know, I love Midnight Run. I've seen that movie 20,000 times. I love Butch Cassidy and Science Scan. I love, um, and it's just, I haven't gotten to do that. So I thought, if I'm going to sit down and work on a script, I'm going to make it like that. Um, and that's what we did. And I, I, so I think that the, the tone is meant to live somewhere in there. But, you know, a movie is made by 300 people, and they all contribute something, especially the director. So Doug came in. Doug has made so many great movies that are, you know, left or right of that exact same thing that I'm describing. They're really funny. He likes friendships. I remember being a teenager and watching Swingers and uh, going back to the theater the next day to see it again because it was just so much fun. Um, and so he seemed like the perfect person for it. And I asked Matt, I said, Matt got involved, I said, do you think Doug Lyman would do this? He was like, well, you know, you know, I knew him before. And he said, I can ask him. And Doug came in and said yes. And so it just became this kind of like perfect scenario and this dream job. The humor in the script has definitely evolved like over the course of the, the making of it. It doesn't, it never ended sort of its development and and even on the set when you're there shooting and Doug has an idea and Matt has an idea and I have an idea and then it just keeps cooking until the like they call you know they say they're moving on I hope it's the kind of it comes off as the kind of humor that I've seen in movies that have been favorite movies of mine I just didn't get to do that much um, 
I just comedies, buddy comedies, friendship movies, uh, the kind of stuff that it would have been hard, I think, to replicate with someone who I just met, didn't have a kind of, wasn't really comfortable with, didn't have a shared sort of sense of humor. And so I hope that that, you know, Matt, the, Matt knowing each other for so long sort of creates a foundation where that can work. I think it should be a lot of fun. I, I hope that it's funny and fun and um, it's entertaining. It's the kind of movie that you want to, you can watch over and over again. You know, when we talk about like how much is too much in a scene, is this too, are we pushing the comedy or not enough, we usually come back to like we want to make something that people watch over and over again through the years. Of course, we'll be lucky if people just, you know, go the first time, but uh, we aim to have it be something that people are going to want to return to. I had never had the opportunity to work on uh, this type of movie, this, this genre of, of action comedy, and uh, I was very happy to be reunited with Matt Damon. Again, we worked together on Downsizing and had a great time. So I was just really looking forward to doing something that I hadn't done before, and I'm a fan of Doug Liman, uh, all of his movies. Uh, they're, they're muscular in a certain way, but they're also really uh, thoughtful and, and they feel a little lived in. Whenever I describe the movie to people, I say that it's an action heist comedy, but I think when I say that, most people think about Ocean's Eleven or something like that, and this is not that, that type of action heist comedy. It's a little bit, um, I think Doug Lyman is trying to make it feel very grounded. He's somehow able to bring that same energy that he had when he was first starting off as a filmmaker into these much uh, bigger budget movies where he still wants it to feel real from moment to moment. We always stop and, and talk about, is this logical? Does this make emotional sense? Would, would these characters actually say or do these things? So even though the situation might be really heightened and absurd, there are always moments in life where people say really ridiculous things in uh, in a, a high stakes situation, a, a highly emotional situation. So it, it's really fun to get to do that. We, we do little line tweaks here and there, just depending on the scene and how everybody's feeling about it. So it feels really collaborative and organic, which I was not expecting uh, when I signed on to do this project. It's been really, really uh, interesting and fulfilling in that way. We have an amazing cast uh, led by Matt Damon and Casey Affleck, but a lot of the supporting uh, characters are played by really wonderful actors like Michael Stolberg, Alfred Molina, uh, Paul Walter Hauser, who's a little bit younger. And then we also have um, Jack Harlow, who's not known as an actor primarily, but he's starting to do more, more acting work, and that's exciting to have that kind of energy on set. Yes, oh, and Ving Rhames and Andre DeShields, who's a theater Broadway legend. Um, Ron Perlman is amazing, and Toby Jones, also an amazing character actor who's uh, done so much fabulous work. It, I mean, it's an embarrassment of riches to, to be uh, a part of this ensemble. He's a kind of uh, low-level, low-level sort of gangster, but he kind of works for Mr. Besser Guy, uh, played by uh, Michael Stuhlbarg. He's a grunt. You know, he kind of like does what he's told. He's, uh, you know, he works, his, he works in a bakery. You know, and that's his, that's the kind of that's the cover, that's the front. He's a bit like a kind of uh, criminal butler. You know, he sort of uh, does his job and works under instructions. He doesn't really think very originally for himself. He's very much uh, in thrall of uh, Mr. Besseguy. There's a kind of relationship between them where Besseguy is all energy, and I'm a little bit slower, a little bit on more on the back foot. I need to be encouraged. I need to be told what to do. I don't. Uh, He's not the sort of person that takes any kind of initiative, you know, so he's very much uh, in the service of this uh, particular caper. It's been lovely working with Doug. He, he's, uh, I'd never worked with him before, and I think I said something like, you know, I'll come and happily lurk in a doorway, you know, and, uh, and he kind of uh, took me at my word. So we've had a couple of scenes where I'm just, like, lurking in doorways. He feels like a very instinctive director. Like, you know, he comes, you know, impeccably prepared. But there's always that lovely moment of... He's willing to kind of like play with it a little bit to let it, you know, let it go somewhere else. If, if there's a, a moment that's kind of feels inspired or if there's a kind of energy that seems to be going somewhere interesting, he's very happy to let it develop. And that's very, um, it's very collaborative and it, and it kind of gives you a, a kind of freedom, you know. But at the same time, 
He does, ser he does serve the text. He serves the story. I did Matt Damon's uh, first project with him called Rising Sun 33 years ago. So now to see him for the first time in 33 years and get to work with him, that was probably the main reason why I wanted to do it. Because when I first read the script, there's a lot of little things I didn't quite understand. I had to read it a couple of times to really get the gist of it. So, uh, but it was really uh, Matt Damon was the reason why I wanted to do it. And then I spoke to Tom Cruise. He said he had worked with the director on the movie American Made. And I, and I told Tom, I said, Tom, I really like that film. This is, you know, like a year ago. And um, so those two reasons were why I chose to do it. Talking to the director about Toomey, he said Toomey is like a superhero. He kind of does what he wants to do. And he has that kind of clout now after years, you know, with the police force and being a detective. So that was kind of, he gave me this kind of bigger than life image of Toomey. So, um, you know, so after talking to him about it and then getting to, you know, mess with the character some, that was kind of like um, him saying he was a superhero, like even the, the truck I drive or whatever, that, you know, huge monstrosity thing. So it was almost like, okay, I, I kind of got a grip on the character. He's a, you could say detective slash cop, or you could say specialized cop, et cetera. But basically he's like a detective who has carte blanche over, he, he has the right to do what he wants to do. Matt Damon plays Rory, and Casey Affleck plays Cobby. Rory sands floors for a living. He used to be a Marine, and he's tried to, uh, you know, walk the straight and narrow, and apparently things got messed up in his relationships. He's messed up his home life, and so he needs this money badly, a very set amount of money to, in his mind, make things better. He gets lugged in by Scalvo to do this, what's supposed to be a simple job. And uh, the other knucklehead he brings into the thing is uh, Casey's character, Cobby, who apparently some years earlier did some time uh, that he blames on Bessa guy, Scalvo, and a group of people who arranged a crime several years ago that uh, Cobby's brother participated in. Cobby's brother gets hooked on drugs, gets caught, and uh, Cobby decides to do the time for his brother. And when he comes out of prison, or while he's in prison, his, his brother dies. So in Cobby's mind, I mean, dies from an overdose. In Cobby's mind, uh, where he is in his life is, I imagine, just trying to recover from his time in prison, trying to make some money in whatever way he can, and he doesn't have that many prospects, so when Scalvo gets in touch with him over the phone to say, look, I got this gig out of nowhere, can you come do this? He leaps at the chance without pretty much thinking very much. Uh, and when he comes in to hear about the deal, Bessie guy gets an idea about what a motor mouth this guy is and how he can't keep his mouth shut and uh, tension builds between them. But he still thinks that these guys, even though they're amateurs, at least in my mind, can make this job work. It's a wonderful tone and it's unique to the piece. And I think it, it, it kind of is an homage to several different kinds of movies all in one. I mean, it's the buddy comedy, it's the heist movie, it is uh, a farce of sorts. Um, but at the same time, Doug was really keen on having all of us grounded in a, a truth and a reality. And that's been an interesting balance to try to find because it comes and goes. And I mean, when I read it on the page initially, I was laughing all over the place just because of the wonderful rhythms they found in the, in the language. And uh, it's the silliness that drew me to it. I think the combination of all of the elements of an action film combined with a buddy comedy, combined with really heartfelt sentiments about these guys who are kind of at the end of their ropes, 
a really wonderful, it's, I mean, it's a wonderful challenge for all of us. I hope people love it, you know, and go along for the ride, which is what it's meant to be, and that there'll be some, uh, that there'll be some surprises there, which will be lovely, and hopefully uh, people will enjoy the whole adventure. I play May Michelli. He's uh, larger than life. He has uh, overwhelmingly um, hedonistic um, tastes and appetites. He uh, understands how the games are played, and he likes making the rules. Well, the script is phenomenally well conceived and well executed. I mean, it's, it's a comedy, which um, I read a lot of comedies, but a lot of them just aren't funny. This one is, and not only is it funny, but it's really smart, and it's filled with East Coast character types, character, like almost caricatures, but they're not, because they're people that you've never quite met before. That's how smart the writing is. Situationally, it's, it's just uh, whacked out, completely whacked out, and really fun to follow. Our two leads, you know, um, the character that Matt plays and the character that Casey plays, couldn't be more different. But they're also brought together by the fact that they're victims of a society that doesn't play fair and kind of like leaves a lot of people behind. So it leaves you wanting to like figure out how to not only take care of yourself, but your, your loved ones and everything around you and you know. And so they're both coming at it to kind of get a W in a, in a, in a, in a, a lifetime of L's. That's the, 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 the bond that they have together. But they are two people who process life completely differently, have totally different values. And one thing leads to another, but the way it's executed, I can't even describe when you read a script that is as the, 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 the pitch of the dialogue and, and the exchanges is, is like, oh yeah, this is actually really, really clever. And it's actually people I want to hang out with and have a beer with. I I'm, I'm, I'm feel like I'm on a dream job here. You know, not only is it the, the script great, but the people who are playing all these characters, I mean, we, you know, along with, Matt and, uh, and, and Casey, you know, you got Ving Rhames and Alfred Molina and uh, Michael and uh, Hung Chow and uh, Paul Walter Hauser. My God, it's like an embarrassment of, of, of the great character actors that I, I long to be around. And here we are all together. Yeah. Most directors are, they just direct traffic. And they don't have, and so you, you have to really, really learn how to bring everything you need to give the performance because you're probably not going to get any real help along the way. Doug is, is, is one of those exceptions where he is constantly giving you idiosyncrasies that are very character driven that will put a whole new set of colors onto the palette, onto the canvas, that you hadn't thought of before. And that is like, you really, really, I come to work every day knowing I better be on my A game because this guy's gonna notice everything and he's gonna ask things of me <clears throat> that, I'm, that, I, that I really have to dig down deep to give him. And uh, that's a phenomenal. And it's, it's also an uh, exception to the rule. When I had the script sent to me, I was immediately excited because they said it was an East Coast, you know, crime story and, and Ben and Casey and Matt are involved and Doug Lyman's directing. I was just like, I almost don't need to read the script. I just want to say yes and do this. But I read it and, and was pleasantly surprised at how funny it was and how nuanced it was. It really is. It's not just about the state of Massachusetts or the city of Boston, it's like, it really is like neighborhood specific as far as vernacular and life experience and the dreams of those specific types of people in that place. Um, I, I really got a kick out of it. I only had the one scene with, with Matt Damon uh, playing the character of Rory and, and Casey playing Cobby. The time I spent with him though, it was really, 
fun to see them work off each other. Clearly, Casey's character, Cobby, is the mouth, and Rory is kind of the, I'll do what you tell me to do. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, Matt's an attractive guy, so it's it's very interesting to see that dichotomy of any time a attra- classically attractive person plays someone kind of dumbed down, it's it's fun. Casey is, is a really good actor. I got kind of a fun moment with him where he um, he kind of turns the tables on my character and kind of holds me up after I'm holding him up. And that was really fun to do. Casey's such a good actor. You just got to look in his eyes and he puts you in that place and time. You could be in Boston. You could be on Mars. If, if you're with him, you're saying the words and you're looking him in the eyes. It's very easy to act. It's cool working with people I've been a fan of for a long time. Doug Lyman, I think, is one of the most, you know, uh, reliable directors in Hollywood. I love his work. I love American Made and Swingers and just everything across the board. And and I think Casey and Matt, you know, anytime we get to see that kind of group of guys come back together and tell a story, uh, it's pretty special. I also think they're having fun. These guys are known for such weighty material. You think of Manchester by the Sea or... Ben and Matt doing The Last Duel for Ridley Scott. These are heavy, heavy things. Uh, and uh, and this is sort of a fun movie where we get to leave our brains at home a little bit and, and throw back some popcorn and just have a good time. I think you have uh, a lot to look forward to. You got uh, action. You got uh, uh, heart. You got humor. You got some, some, a healthy amount of violence. You got Boston accents. That's always good. And um, more than anything, I think it's, it's sort of a dual gendered uh, four quadrant, five quadrant type of movie. Everybody can find something to enjoy in The Instigators. I like how earnest Doug is. Like when Doug wants something, he just says it. He doesn't try to massage you or say it in a certain way to manipulate the situation. He just comes out and says what he likes. And when he doesn't like something, he says it. So you always know where you stand. I always admire a person. I always sort of viewed instigators as, you know, the bad news bears of a heist movie. Instigators will be in a unique lane because it's a heist movie, but it's a heist movie where um, it's not even like the B team. It's like the, the E team or the F team doing the heist. I met with Hong and, and thought she was just so smart and funny and charming and and most of all given that that Matt and Casey were going to go off script quite a bit that she could keep up with them um you know there's a uh it's kind of there's a snarky tone um especially her relationship her character's relationship with with Casey's character and you know Casey's like a a savant or something when it comes to like his ability to just you know start with the script and then just go off on a tangent and it's he's so compelling to watch um in a way it it sometimes it can make me a little bit lazy as a filmmaker because there's a scene where they're sneaking into the restaurant where they're going to rob the uh the mayor and the, the boat sinking and i was like you know I'm not even going to bother scripting this. I'm going to put Matt and Casey and Jack Harlow in a boat and start it sinking. And Casey will ad lib funny shit and Matt will ad lib funny shit and Jack will react to it and I'll have a great scene. I don't need to. I, the only thing I need to do to prep for that scene is arrange for the boat to sink. And, and that was, it was like that on, on almost any day I could, if I could come up with an outrageous scenario and put, put Matt and Casey and Hong into that scenario, um, you know, we did have a script, but I could be like, okay, now let's forget about what's in the script and just, just let's play the situation. Alfred Molina came in to play, um, he and Michael Stuhlbarg played this previous generation of criminals and the, who are the masterminds of, of this heist. Um, and on the second day of the shoot, I found myself shooting a scene with Matt and Casey 
Jack Harlow, Michael Stuhlbarg, and Alfred Molina, and I'm looking at the script, and Alfred Molina has, it's a like a seven-page scene. Alfred has one line. And I'm like, oh, my God. He's like, I've dreamt my, my whole career of working with Alfred Molina. I can't believe. Other scenes, he had more lines, but I'm like, I can't believe. In this scene, he's basically an extra. And then Alfred says, you know, I'm looking at this scene, and I don't think it makes sense for me to say that line. I think Jack should say that. It's not really within my character. So now I'm like, he has no lines. And the reality is that, that he basically steals the scene. I just think audiences are going to love every character and every scene in Instigators. I mean, it was just one of those movies where, like, I was shooting a scene and my producer, Kevin Walsh, came over and he was like, can you do another take? And I was like, because I was like, I'm feeling pretty good about it. He goes, yeah, no. I just want to watch it again. I was like, don't even give them any other notes. Like, have them just, I was like, well, you could just watch playback of what we just did. Like, I'm not going to make them go through it again just so you can watch the scene again. But, but that is something that I, you know, I'm accusing him of that. But at other points, I found myself saying, let's do it again just because the writing was so smart and, and, especially Matt and Casey, are just to get both of them in the same movie and then surrounded by this insane supporting cast. There's just, there wasn't a weak link.